my first guest tonight is a video game designer and artist. He has worked for such companies as Valley and Midway, and he is known for the game Rampage. Now, Rampage was a, a success that set arcade earning records, and it was eventually ported to more than 25 different platforms and is still prominently featured in Midway Arcade compilations for the current systems. Please give it up for Brian Cullen. Chicago boonies outside about 30 miles south of Chicago and got a nice little wooded acre and it's, uh, it's cold in the winter and humid and hot in the summer and so we'll give it all. There. Yeah. It's a lovely variety. Yes. <laughs> so. Now you have worked in uh, video games since the early 80s and during that time you worked on some pretty incredible titles. Can you please give us some of the highlights of those titles? Um, the highlight of Rampage is R, the highlight of Disotron is D and T. You want me to be more specific so just than this? Okay, tell, tell us some of the, some of the more iconic uh, games that you've worked in. The, the games I'm best known for from those days are the games that I was lucky enough they were letting us do whatever we wanted for the most part, and, and we had to push a little bit, but the games I'm known best for are the games I designed, like Rampage. Uh, like Xenophobe, uh, uh, games like uh, Swackery, which nobody's heard of, but uh, uh, Arch Rivals, Pigskin, those are the games I'm probably best known for. And every one of those games relied on humor and head-to-head -head competition uh, to, you know, just kind of bring out the most fun in what was a social gaming experience of the day the arcade. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay. Now, now you and your team has received uh, a number of awards and honors uh, over the years, but the one we found uh, most surprising was your introduction to the White Castle Hall of Fame. So, my question to you, sir, is how did that happen? Um, I, I am in the White Castle Hall of Fame with uh, a couple of co-workers, uh, Bobby LaRaza and Bob Montgomery, and uh, we were working with a new game engine, and they uh, were trying to figure out what it could do. Are we going to be able to do some games with this? And I said, okay, so let's make some iconic buildings to start with, because that was kind of the weaker side of the engine. And, um, and I'm thinking I, I'm going to get Eiffel Tower, you know. Big Ben, you know, this kind of stuff. I come back over a few hours later and they've got a slider, you know, they've got a slider sitting there on the screen in their, in the environment. And I said, okay, fine. And they grabbed a little goblin we had from another game and somebody else made some little floating sliders floating around the thing. And before you know it, two days later, we had this goblin running around grabbing sliders and because they had, that was one of the first years, early years of that promotion. Some we sent it off to White Castle, and boy, I mean, my wife choked up when they brought us to Ohio, brought us to the little hallway off the restrooms where on the wall was a plaque with my name on it and Bobby's name on it and, and Bob's name on it, and she broke down. She broke that. She says, That's gonna be there forever. Right? Am I kidding, Ray? I am not kidding. That that is actually true. It was it was one. They were wonderful. They were fun people. And yes, I am in the White Castle Hall of Fame. How did you dig that out? I, 
Well, we, we, we have a specialized team coming up with these questions. <laughs> All right, so now, uh, uh, Rampage, tell me about that. Rampage, um, how did it get started? Rampage was kind of a, uh, they told me we couldn't do something. So when someone tells me I can't do something naturally, how can we get that to happen? And, and Rampage, I've told the story a million times, very briefly, they said we can't do background animation because the hardware would only move rectangles. So I looked at Sharon, the other artist at the time, and, and said, okay, a building collapsing into itself is animating rectangles. So that's where Rampage came from. The, 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 the whole part of knocking buildings down and, and getting rid of urban blight gave me a chance as an artist to make bigger characters so you can see the comedy in their faces because I'm always about people enjoy games more if they laugh and more importantly they'll put it in another order if they laugh. So that, it, it all kind of came together and you know when I was a little kid we did not have these things called video games. Um, I had sandboxes and you make sandcastles and when you're done with a sandcastle and you filled it with your army men, there's only one thing to do is to stand up and stomp your sand castle back into the sand bath box. So that's pretty much everything as succinctly as I can wrap it up. So, yeah, as well, when we were little, we used to do uh, uh, paper cities, got so out of your stuff. Ooh, that's good. So I can identify. I can okay. identify. Build and destroy. That seems to be our medium. So, <laughs> that's terrific. So, George. Lizzie and Ralph. Yes. How did you go about naming these monster protagonists of Rampage? Um, George, George just struck me. You mice of men, George. I figured George was not too bright. Um, Lizzie was. She was a lizard. That's a given. And then uh, <laughs> my my partner uh, Jeff Nauman liked the name Ralph, so, and in fact, if you look at the opening of the game, in the old game, when those three, the computer feed speeds, spills out and shows a little picture of the human people, um, I'm George, my wife Ray was Lizzie, and Jeff Nauman, the programmer and co-designer, was Ralph. So, there you go, if you want to see what I looked like, 30 blah, 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 years ago, that's exactly what I <laughs> so, so you're a fan of mice and men. Oh, yes, absolutely. So, is it yes, I love that film. Now, you're a you're, you're fan of the, the original with Burgess Meredith or? Yeah, oh, yeah. No, yeah. Yeah, the first. Yeah, that, that, that one's my favorite. favorite. Yeah. That one's my favorite. Yes. Yes. There, there was a remake that was done. Yeah, with, with uh, uh, Gary Southern Spence Illinois and uh, John Malkovich. Malkovich. And so, Benton, which, was, which was Big shout out to anybody here from Benton, Illinois. That's what I thought. Okay. <laughs> but John Malkovich is. And, and that was a good movie, but the, the first was... The first, first one's classic. Yes. I mean, that's, and for those that don't know, Burgess Meredith played the Penguin on the original Batman series back in 1966. And it was also... Um, uh, uh, oh, what's... Um, oh, he was the son of the man, man of a thousand faces. Lon Let's Chaney. Say. So, yes, Lon, Lon Chaney, Chaney Jr. Jr. Long was Cheney Jr. Famous for the Wolfman was uh, was the one who had the wonderful role of Lenny. He did an amazing job with that. So, yes, so well, that's great. That's nice to know that's, uh, that's uh, where the history of that came from. So, uh, so aside from now, Rampage has taken on quite quite a life of its own, hasn't it? It has. Um, we did the first one, and and then later we left and formed our own company. And and the new Williams Valley Midway asked us to come back and do. A game that would appeal to a broader demographic and Rampage always had little kids reaching up and playing and with their parents and so we said let's redo Rampage they love the idea so Rampage World Tour the sequel the remake actually uh, had a lot more depth we could have a lot more fun with it um, uh, we did both of those arcade games uh, and since then the the, I couldn't even begin to tell you how many, anybody know how many different Rampages were out there? There are, there are at least a half dozen remakes where they just keep adding more characters and more characters and more characters. Yeah, that's been around for like, what, so it was, what, what year did it come out? 
about 80, 85 is when we did it. So it came out at end of 85, early 86. And then we did the sequel uh, around the 94, 95, something. So we're, we're looking at it all blurs. Blurs. It it's all blurs. Blurs. It's it's like, it's, that's, yeah. that's, uh, that's, that's quite an accomplishment to have something. Uh, it's, like it's wonderful. It's wonderful to come to shows like this and hear people firsthand remember what it did to them, or I mean, I'm sorry, meant to them as children. <laughs> uh, and I, what it did to them? You want to clarify that? We caught a lot, we caught a lot of grief for that. I mean, that game was the first video game in which there were fully naked people on. When you change back into a human, I mean, you were only four pixels across, so I defy you to find something, but you were naked and we got grief for that. I mean, you could eat your friends. We got grief for that too. So I'm glad that it didn't really break a generation because at the time there was a lot of, you know, this is horrible, this is violent. But really it was an environmental statement. It, that's, I mean, that's what it was. I came from child college in the 70s. Urban blight was freaking me out, you know, and it's just, there's too much. What's the solution? There you go. Let's knock down these buildings. So, so now knocking down the buildings, you were you, you were describing uh, earlier in creating the game. You know that you said that they, they said you couldn't do it, right. and so so it was your goal to take what technology you had at the time to start knocking down buildings. And and then you also said that uh, you know when you were a kid you were knocking down sandcastles and such. So. Um, uh, but where exactly did the inspiration for the game come from? Was, was it from that childhood memory? Not well, the, the, the thematic inspiration, yes, was being a kid, what's fun? Destroying stuff. Destroying stuff. But the actual inspiration for the game came from them saying, no, you can't do this with this hardware. So I was like, we can figure out a way to do this. We can figure out a way to do this. So, and, and then the selfish part as an animator wanting to make bigger figures so I could see their faces. So it was a combination of things. It was a combination. Well, that's, I, I can identify with that. I was I was kind of the same as a child. That uh, you know, my parents would tell me I couldn't accomplish something. You know, they, well, first they said you're 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 lazy, <laughs> and, uh, and then they said, but uh, when you want to do something, you you stick to it till it's done. You know, because they would tell me I couldn't do something, and that ended up being the very thing I had to do. You know, so when they said I couldn't be an intergalactic crime fighter, well, then there you go. There you have it. This is what you can achieve. <laughs> okay. So, um, now, uh, with the success of Rampage, there has been some talk that there is a movie in production. So, um, what can you tell us about that? And by chance, would the casting directors be looking for an intergalactic crime fighter? You know, uh, I've got a, I've got a relationship, uh, a very special relationship with the producers. I've contacted them dozens of times, and they have, as yet, they're holding back before they actually get in touch with me. So I'm, I'm, I'm figuring it's because they're waiting for the you know film premiere or something like that. But uh, actually, yeah, I know nothing really inside about it. The game the uh, game was picked up by a group about five years ago. Every few years they've said it's about to start. Um, some people know that uh, last year, Dwayne The Rock Johnson attached to it. So it really looks like it might happen. It was supposed to start filming this, um, summer but just about a month ago they announced that it's going to start filming next spring so it's still in the works uh carlton cues and uh, uh, a couple of great script writers are working on it um again i i offered to help they've not yet reached back to me um i i did want to take a um I want to be proactive though, in case they ask me to do a cameo. Um, uh, I, I wrote Stan Lee and said, I've never done this kind of thing before. If they asked me to do a cameo, would you play me in the cameo? And like all the other Hollywood people I've dealt with, he hasn't answered me either, so. 
Actually, I've heard that Stan Lee is uh, planning his immortality. He's already filmed multiple endings to future films to be produced, so that way they can just start pulling cameos in from a file and just uh, look at them. Maybe that's something you might want to plan to the sequel. So, all right. Um, so, now, what, what are some of the other titles that, that are well known that you've done besides Rampage? Um, well, arcade titles for this group. I, my first game, my first game I ever worked on was Discs of Tron, uh, which is a great the sequel to Tron. Uh, I worked on games like Demolition Derby and uh, Sarge with uh, Jeff Nauman, programmer who would later become my partner at Game Refuge. Um, Worked on, yeah, well, we said Rampage, games like Zwackery, which no one, very few, it's a very rare game because they only produce like 177 of them. Um, I worked on, one of the great things about working in those early days is I worked on everything. Our programmers worked on one project. Artists got to do this on this project, this on this project, this on this project. So I worked on basically everything that came out of Valley Midway that was developed internally for 10 years. Um, I got to work on Spy Hunter. I got to, uh, it, admittedly, not everything we worked on, we probably should have worked on. I worked on Patui Louie. Yeah. You guys have never heard of Patui Louie because it was a giant red pterodactyl with a bikini-clad cave woman <laughs> on his back who threw bo boomerangs while the birds spit watermelon seeds and giant invisible killer bees. Which sounds like it should be a slam dunk, right? Happens to me every day. <laughs> you know, I think in, in where you come from, it would have done much better than it did here. Just another day at the office. Yeah, no, that one, right into the toilet. Um, I mean, I've got about 90 titles to, under my belt today, um, but I've been doing this for be 35 years in February. And, you know, there's been some that are very well recognized and some that, you know, you wish you'd never touched. But uh, th those, those are the highlights of the arcade years. Arch Rivals, of course, Pigskin, uh, Star Trek Voyager, I think was um, until this year where I just worked on another arcade game, so we're coming full circle. Um, Star Trek Voyager was our last arcade game. Oh. Um, that was about 10 years ago, so worked on a lot of games. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Well, it sounds like you, you have had a very extensive career and a very successful one at that. It's been fun. It, and, and in a word, it's been fun. Oh, well, that's wonderful. Well, Mr. Coleman, I do want to appreciate you coming here on the show and talking with us today. It has been a total joy, and I do hope you will come back and visit us again real soon. I'd love to come back. That's wonderful. Thank you very much, sir.